Welcome, people of God. Today's scripture is from the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in his field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but when it's grown, it is the largest of all vegetable plants. It becomes a tree so that the birds in the sky come and nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that someone hid in a field, which someone else also found and covered up. Full of joy, the finder sold everything and bought that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found one very precious pearl, he went and sold all that he owed and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that people threw into the lake and gathered all kinds of fish. When it was full, they pulled it to the shore where they sat down and put the good fish together into containers, but the bad fish they threw away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? O oh, holy and gracious God, your word is like a seed that is sown in our hearts. And you are the God of growth and you are the God of harvest. So may your seed take root and grow in unexpected ways. All this we pray in your holy name, amen. When I was in high school and a brand new Christian, a friend gave me a necklace that contained a mustard seed. Now it was scarcely more than the size of a grain of sand. But I wore that because I kept thinking my faith is young and I wanted it to grow. It was like a talisman reminding me of the work that God was beginning in my life. And often this is kind of the way this text is interpreted. Scholars and preachers have talked about this text as small things becoming great things. In God, to bring in God's kingdom, to, to encourage the church throughout the ages, and indeed it has. But I wonder if there's a different way to approach this text. The people who were gathered around Jesus that day would have been shocked to hear the kingdom of God compared to a mustard seed or to yeast. Mustard seed was an invasive species. It would take over fields, choke out what was planted, grow enormous. Farmers did not want that crop. In the same way, unlike we who bake today and use yeast as leavening, it was not a wanted ingredient in the time of Jesus. It, it would contaminate the dough. So to hear Jesus talk like this had to be a great surprise. So friends, I'm wondering, is the purpose of this parable about growth? Or can we think to something that is invasive and unpredictable about the kingdom of God? Imagine a sack of grain that the farmers are preparing to put into the field and mustard seeds somehow got caught up in the midst of it. The farmer didn't notice it when he was planting, casting that seed out. It was so small. But suddenly these plants sprouted up with the rest of the crop. And the final result dramatically changed what the farmer was expecting.
You know, as I've watched our farmers, the nice, neat, orderly rows that they plant. I mean, goodness, the technology that we have these days, that it is an amazing thing to behold a field. But the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed and it disrupts the orderliness of our lives, invading and overturning by inbreaking of a spirit that is unexpected. I think the temptation of the church, the temptation even in my own life, is to draw clear, unarguable boundaries around the kingdom of heaven Goodness knows we order our worship. If I change the order of worship, I will inevitably just mess it up because I'm so used to a certain flow. And when it's changed, I can't even, it's like I can't even follow a bulletin. It is truly pitiful. We have our creeds. We have our worship. We have the theology that we follow. As United Methodists, as big an umbrella of church as we have, we do have edges that contain us. We say Jesus is Lord, but sometimes we are so tame, it is as if Jesus is, is almost dispensable just a nice guy who went about doing good in the first century. In the church, we want to define who we are and who fits within us and who, who maybe should not be a part of our life together. So naturally, when there are important doctrinal and theological framings that we say, we say we have the scripture, we have creeds, we have liturgy, we have tradition, we have boundaries nice, neat, carefully tended rows of doctrine and practice. But you know, Jesus hints that that's maybe not how the kingdom of God always works. We have the voice of God that sometimes whispers in our ears, pushing us beyond our boundaries, beyond our comfort zones, forcing us to, to discern together whether they are in fact our boundaries alone or if they truly are God's boundaries. In this sense, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, a tiny little symbol of how God is forever invading our orderly sense of things. It just hides there like a treasure hidden in a field, like a pearl of great price, like the good fish that the fisher persons gather that had been hidden among the rest. You know, this past week we lost an icon of the civil rights music movement. John Lewis was a son of a sharecropper a person who preached his first sermon as a teenager and became known as the boy from Troy because of his deep, deep yearning to change the system of oppression of people of color, particularly the black community. He lived his whole life fighting for justice, fighting for the right to vote, fighting for the beloved kingdom to become real in our midst, that place where people of all colors and nationalities and creeds and faiths would be treated as equal and as beloved and as welcomed. 
He talked about making good trouble. When he was a youth, he would complain to his parents about how unjust it was that, that black people were not allowed to drink from the same fountain or to sit in the front of the bus and they'd say, boy, just keep quiet, don't make trouble. But it, God's planting in his heart of the gospel raised up this urgency, this lived life of breaking through those barriers for the sake of others, for the sake of the gospel. You know, I see hints of that beloved community in this congregation through the ministry of those who work to make sure there's food on the table for any who need it in those places where there are families who have food insecurity. I see this in a passion for working with our immigrant community through Justice for Our Neighbor to make sure that they have the legal resources they need to move through our immigration process. I see it in persons who are sewing masks for our children and youth as school approach so they can be safe and keep one another Friends, I wonder what good trouble we could get into. I wondered what mustard seeds have been planted in this place, in this church, in the hearts of you, this congregation, that we could come together and have the inbreaking of the kingdom of God here in our midst. These questions I leave with you and pray that the Spirit may come and raise up those seeds in ways that are surprising, perhaps even chaotic, but will bring the kingdom of God to this place. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I invite you as I come to a pause and say, Lord, in your mercy for you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Oh, holy and gracious God, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But who, what if it were to come to pass? And what if we were part of that inbreaking of the kingdom here on earth? We hear the story of the mustard seed, that tiny thing that grows and is wild and free and disrupts the orderly ways of our lives. And we think, oh Lord, is that what we want? Forgive us. Help us to be ready to receive the wildness of your spirit, the inbreaking of your call, the disruption it might bring to our lives. But may we receive it as a sign of your kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look at our world, O oh God, we see those war-torn places where violence breaks forth. We see communities that struggle because of poverty and disenfranchisement. And violence breaks forth that we pray, oh Lord, come. We think of homes where violence breaks out spouse against spouse, parents toward children. And we cry out, oh Lord, what can we do? Call us, give us a voice, help us work toward the peaceable kingdom. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, O oh Lord, also as COVID is ravaging communities, especially in our country. People are dying. People are suffering for months following having this virus and don't know if they will fully recover. And people are going about their business, oh Lord, not even knowing that they are passing this virus along to others unknown. Give us your wisdom. Help us to do the things we need to do to protect others, to support one another, to connect with one another in ways that are safe, to help combat the isolation and the fear, trusting in your presence and being wise in our decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And oh Lord, we pray for those who are ill, who are struggling with chronic illnesses, who have received diagnoses that are frightening. We think especially of Judy Stein, who has received a diagnosis of cancer and is undergoing tests to determine what, what they need to do. We pray for you, to, your Holy Spirit, to touch her be with her doctors and nurses and all who are tending to her and give them your wisdom and your compassion that they can help her be with she and her family. Surround them with your comfort and love and help them to know that you journey with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we celebrate with Andrew and Gretchen Light as they have their twins Eve Estelle and Abner Allen baptized this weekend. Oh Lord, what a great celebration that is. Surround that family. May they know that you are with them and journeying with them as they gather together with other family members to celebrate the baptism of these babies and, and the health that they have now that they're older and the joy they will have in raising them. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We raise up our church, O oh God. In this season where we are trying to find our way and how to be in mission and ministry in light of this, the world that we live in right now, Plant those seeds, those tiny seeds, O oh Lord, that they may raise up in our hearts. May your spirit nurture them and tend them and make us brave to act upon them. Bring healing, bring hope, bring the assurance that you are leading us into the future and give us eyes to see and ears that hear and hearts that are ready to receive your call to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I pray for our school teachers and our students, our college professors, all of those who work with children and youth and young adults in the education system. Oh Lord, keep them healthy Keep them safe. Help them to be innovative and creative and confident that our children and youth and young adults may learn and grow and become the people you are calling them to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now in this time of silence, I invite you to pray to the Lord those concerns that are quiet in your heart.
and now with the confidence of children of God. Let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Spirit nurture it and grow it into the wideness and wildness of the call of God upon us. May you go from this place carrying the light of Christ into the world for the sake of others. Amen.